Hi everyone, um, I'm Priya Tanna, Editor-in-Chief of Vogue India and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to be here in this, which is my Insta Live and a part of our How I Made It series of conversation um, with extraordinary women thought leaders. Uh, we've been hosting these uh, Insta chats with you as a part of our special weekend. It's been a lead up to our um, annual Women of the Year Awards. It's been an incredible year. We've had a lineup of some incredible women achievers. Um, we've brought it to you in three parts um, since Friday, today being the finale at 6.30 p.m. Um, India's IST on Vogue India's Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channels. In case you do miss it live, don't forget to catch it on our um, social media channels. Honestly, the best way you can honor them is by by witnessing their remarkable, remarkable stories. Um, I'm very excited to talk to my next guest today and to introduce you to her. Um, for me, she is one of the smartest storytellers and filmmakers in the country. Um, she's been a recipient of our Filmmaker of the Year Award in 2019. Yes, she is a gifted storyteller. I think that just runs in her genes. Um, but I feel that her success lies in making these very, very sleek um, slice of life productions that are honestly as modern, witty, and authentic as she is. Um, I loved, I have loved her entire body of work, whether it's been Luck by Chance, Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara, Dil Dharak Ne Do, and of course, who can forget um, India's entry to the Oscars last year, um, Gully Boy. So without further ado, I'm going to go and connect with the force and talent that is Zoya Akhtar. And she should join us. Hey. Hello. How are you? Very well. How are you? Very well. It's so good to see you. It's been very long. I know. It's been a while. But then it's been like nobody's really seen anybody. You know? I know. Like, it's been it's yeah. like This could be yeah. honest. I'm sure it is. I'm sure as we talk, there are people thinking of how to make a movie out of this year in the most bizarre, twisted ways. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of really interesting content. How you? How's lockdown been for you? What have you been up to? I think it was. I mean, uh, uh, it was good for me in a sense. Like personally, I think I needed to stop, and uh, you know, assess and breathe and rest and sleep. So for me, it was uh, good. But I, I am privileged. I, I am somebody that, you know, like if I didn't work for a couple of months, I'd be okay. Uh, so yeah. Personally, it was good for me. But what was actually disturbing for me was the news. It was disturbing what was going on and it was disturbing how people were affected and it was disturbing that people lost their livelihoods, they they couldn't go home. So that was incredibly disturbing. But personally, for me, I think it was uh, it was needed for if I, 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 Paul, I remember re watching a post or catching you reading uh, Megha Mazumdar's yes. A Burning. Yes. She's one of our of this year's Women of the uh, Women of the Year Awards, she's incredible. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a really powerful book. It's a really powerful book. It's a really good book, and it it leaves you a bit shook up. It's excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Zaya, the reason I wanted to chat with you is because, like I was before introducing you, I was saying that this has been the weekend where we bring to the audience um, our annual Women of the Year Awards. And it's something we feel very, very proud. And um, uh, it's really special to us, especially because we're a team that's run largely by women for women and all of that. Um, so the series of conversations that we've had is called How I Made It. And whilst everybody is very, very familiar with your trajectory and all of that, what I really want to do is break it down a little bit so that people get insights to the 
the admirable steps you've taken to reach where you are. So my first question to you is, I, I, I have read that you started being a, you started out as a copywriter when you were 19 and then you assisted directors like uh, Mira Nair, Tony, Tony Gerber and uh, Dave Benegal. Was it, a, was it a given that coming from a film family, this was going to be your port of call? This was going to be your um, career choice? Did you ever toy with anything else? Was anything else an option? Uh, you know, uh, well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a vet because uh, I really, uh, I love dogs. So when I was a kid, I thought I'd be a vet. And then I realized you have to really study. So that went out of the window. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. And then uh, for a long time, I was like, you know, I'd be interested in law um, if I wanted to do that. But then as I got older, I, I mean, you know, when you're in a film family, the thing that happens is that you're surrounded by it. We, uh, we watched so much cinema. And you don't realize because you're surrounded by artists and your parents are discussing, and both my parents are writers, and right. you would film in a very different way, you know. So we would watch a movie and then it would be dissected by all these adults around us in a particular way. They'd be talking about the screenplay, they'd be talking about the performances, they'd be talking about the cinematography, uh, you know, how it was shot. So you start looking at film, you just take in a lot by osmosis and you start looking yeah. at differently and I used to write even when I was in school I was pretty good with language and literature and stuff like that so I used to write I started studying literature and sociology and I was like you know maybe if, I don't know if I want to make movies because the 80s the movies were quite bad the late 80s early 90s which is when I was in college and yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, I should maybe be a writer you know and uh, so I was thinking I'll start copywriting you know, but I saw Salam Bombay and then I was like this is it I'm no. gonna do yeah. And my house, I mean, we were free to do what we wanted. Nobody told us what we should do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But do it and, you know, persevere to do it as best as you can. But nobody yeah. was told this or do that or what, you know, what business to get into or what not to get into. Whatever. Yeah, you, you just got to live the pursuit. You find your passion, which itself exactly. is a big thing. Exactly. You live to, the pursuit, yeah. chase, you know, you yeah. know that's lucky. It's your luck. But, you know, there's so much buzz and this year more than ever. Zoya, for all the right and the wrong reasons, there's been so much buzz about words like insiders and outsiders. And yesterday, in fact, I was talking to Radhika Apte in an Insta Live, where she sort of defended the genesis of this word nepotism. And she said, you know, it is an outsider's way of viewing what nepotism really means. And she's like, it's how we label people. But if you are a parent and if your child, like you said, you grew up in an en environment that was immersed in cinema organically you didn't really have to do that much you know what is what do you feel about this coming from a film family tag um has it worked to your advantage has it worked to your disadvantage in any way no you, there are i'll tell you what it is there are advantages because right. like you grow up immersed in it so you even before i knew i was learning about writing i was learning about writing it's the trade right. It's like if you were growing up with two parents that were lawyers, you would have an insight that a person from the outside won't. Or if there were right. two parents, uh, 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 like a business family, you have an yes. understanding of it, or politics, or anything. You have an understanding of it that other people don't. A. B. So you know how to navigate the industry. The second thing is because you grow up in the industry and those people are your parents' friends, you know the network because that's who they are. These are the people you have, that access. Come, you have access. They come and have dinner at your home. So you've met yeah. them. So those doors open for you, you know. And after that, there is no advantage. These are big advantages. Please, let's not uh, yeah. uh, pretend, you know, they're big advantages. But that's it. I mean, I am born and bred in the lap of this industry. It took me seven years to make a movie. My business yeah. partner, he, born in Assam, educated in Delhi, came and made a movie before me. My friend Ruchi Narayan lived in Muscat, went to Woodstock, went to Xavier's, made a movie four years before me. There is mm. no standard rule. It doesn't, you know, it, it, there's no such thing as that, oh, because you are, there yeah. are yeah, advantages, but that means nothing. You but know, that's for that part. Everything else is dependent on your content and what you do on your craft, on your skill. You can't, yes. you know, everything. Oh, yeah. yes. In the door. And, the, the, you know, see, you have to understand also, I think there's a, 
the term is you know what 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 is nepotism nepotism is if i'm in a position of power like public power yeah. or a board yeah. or corporate like i'm on a board or i'm in a political position or i'm in a position where i have public money i have other people's money and i take that and i take those advantages and i favor someone close to me correct that is nepotism how can me putting my own money on my own child be nepotism then everybody is a nepotist absolutely absolutely <laughs> when you favor your own child or your own friend's child or your neighbor's child with someone else's resource but if it's your own resource you favor who you want exactly that works world over you know so i mean so i think the word is wrong on some level and yes there is access we have access and we have an understanding the industry right. have an understanding of the business they're born into it but today that's just, that's just a natural advantage you can't do you can't do anything about it exactly i mean now i don't know how to, like to, to tomorrow um say but if you make a list i'm not joking uh, uh pray you make a list of all the actors working today there are more people from outside than inside you make a no. list of actors working today there are more people from outside than inside no. just make list of the top 10 directors and you tell me how many are industry kids or the top 10 yeah. actors so it's a it's a really silly it's a misnomer it's a silly it's a competition and this is india we function i mean i get calls from somebody hey can you meet my kid he wants guidance i'm going to say yes this is someone of course. i work with I went to school with this person. I am going to talk to this person's child. This is who we are as people, as a society. We are going to help each other. That's who we are. So I need to turn around. And it's my money. It's my film. It's my risk. It's my reward. I'll put it on who I want. If I was taking True. your and favoring my child, you have the right to question me. Right. But how can you question me when it's my own money? and i also feel that in a creative in a creative industry like cinema or a, as an artist or as a singer that's only going to get you to a step it's going to put you in it's going to give you the entry else has to be done and that's a very big thing getting a break is a very big thing so we have to acknowledge that but why are we giving breaks to actors children you tell me why do we think that actors children as producers and financiers why do we think actors children get us eyeballs because they get the eyeballs the That's journal true. the media is constantly promoting them and the audience is constantly clicking on them this is the data so, filmmakers are getting exactly that's exactly radhika do you understand so you want you want to work, you want to watch newcomers please buy their ticket there's this film which won the best film and mami it's called eeb aleu okay it's made by a director called pratik watts it's an outstanding film right outstanding film it won best film at the mami film festival and i'm one of the people on the board the, uh, it's got an actor in it called shardul bhardwaj who was it's one of the best performances i have seen right i mean to try and publicize that film was a nightmare like i was speaking yeah. to, uh, the press doesn't they were not interested they were not That's interested the no 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 so on one hand you are not giving the attention where you should be and on the other you are the one running behind the star kids so how dare you abuse them absolutely don't photograph it is also an easy target it's easy to give these terms and tags and to you know make stories out of things when none exist i think it's just easy doing this you know but it's a very very valid point the other point that really annoys me zoya is when people refer to you as a woman filmmaker are they saying this for every bloody male filmmaker that ye to male filmmaker hai so why i mean surprising for I mean, becoming it, a film though it's definitely gotten better and i Thanks. think it's better. yeah yeah it's gotten better um, you, you have to say that because it doesn't come up like that like it used to 
and i think it's gotten better because of the sheer number of women that are in the industry and are every year fantastic so you know it's lost. sorry i lost me because we, yeah i'm getting a phone call from uh, homi and i touch off as well so i'm trying Nighty, please tell your husband not to call Zoya. <laughs> She's yeah. So uh, it's uh, it's definitely gotten better, but it, it's a big thing, you know. This female filmmaker. It's very strange that you are you have to keep mentioning my gender. It's very strange, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because they don't even do it for. They don't say female doctor, female journalist, female lawyer. They don't do that. But it's just it became a unique. thing about female filmmaker it was a bit weird and now i think it's but do you feel any bias do you still do you feel any gender bias at all uh no you know the truth is and i'll tell you something this is where i feel my real privilege is which is i grew up in a family where it was really not like there was no disparity between my brother and me and it's not just my unit it's my extended family on my father's side and my extended family on my mother's side there was never any form of sexism in our family on both sides so when you grow up in an environment that's completely equal you kind of don't recognize the sexism for a while because you don't clock it it's not personal you know what i mean you've never experienced it so it's not in your radar so it actually took me a while to uh, pick it up because even if it happened i was missing it because i don't approach uh, like uh, like my approach to things only comes from a very uh, entitled space for the lack of an i don't feel no, no. like as a woman i need to work you know harder because i'm a woman i need to work hard because i want to be a good artist exactly and I, i want to be better at my job you know right. and right. work i want to be authentic to this story and i wanted to make money and but i never my gender never comes into question because i've never been made aware of it as a kid and i think that was a real advantage because it comes with a certain confidence you know uh when it, so i don't i, I have not uh, really experienced it in a hard yeah that the skirmishes so in hollywood right you have these amazing literally they're just like silent movements they're like women's collectives whether you see a reese with a spoon production house where she takes on women writers and she 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 translates she takes books that have been written by powerful women for uh, authors and turns them into movies and um you see you know you see the the woman who made a wrinkle in time eva duvernay and you see that whole movement and collective of women just banding together you know you did the morning you had the uh, Jennifer Aniston Reese with a spoon show the new show the morning show why do you feel a similar sense of collective coming together this sort of a movement coming together in bollywood where women are banding together more and more to create interesting roles tell interesting stories is that happening i mean if you think about it like a show like made in heaven though we are co-producing hmm. excel entertainment which is a uh, rotation <laughs> and uh, uh you know the thing even they they have three female directors that work with them you know mm. rek in itya mera rima so there as a production house which is run by two men have had women working all their lives in every capacity from the producer mm. producer uh, directors every capacity but the show like made in heaven it had four very big female directors that came together to make it so whether yes. it was Shivasta, Rima Kati, me, Nitya Mehra. We always have uh, directors that come in. We always have a male director, which is great. We must. But as a thing, it was four different women that came in and put this out, and it's mainly female narratives within within the show. So uh, yeah, I think it's already happening. When I look at people's work, at the kind of work people are doing, like uh, I love what Anushka is doing with her company, uh, with her. I love what she's doing, and she's putting very strong stories out. And the thing is, not you know, it's not always like if you're women, you should put out women stories. No, exactly. Or you put out story. Exactly, it's your gaze. So even if the story is about a man, it's through your right. gaze. It's how right. the way exactly. you the world and how you see men. So the more voices that are out there, and I think more and more women are out there, and it's amazing. 
but talking about your gaze i want to come back to it what i love about the stories you do is how you manage to not just give a voice to urban india but without us even realizing it you're highlighting so many issues that need to be highlighted whether it was of course whether it was gully boy but even a maid in heaven dil dhadakne do last stories you are subliminally feeding us important messages is that a part is that very very uh, core to your film making process and the kind of movies you want to do is that an approach that just is that something you uh, consciously work towards i think so i think because uh, i feel like there has to be certain relevance and i don't mean messaging i just exactly mean- i feel i feel a resonance you know yeah. uh, what you're doing and what you're putting out there and somewhere uh, uh you need to um, you know you you need to put your consciousness out there you know you have a very massive platform and uh, what you're putting out there is going to live on beyond you you know and uh, uh i mean all film needs to entertain i i love watching movies and i'm not going to watch something that's boring me or giving me a lecture or preaching to me or telling me you know about like i want to be entertained but within that if i can be lifted within that if i can see a new perspective within that if i can somehow shift you know uh, those are the films that have stayed back with me and that is what i try to put out you know um uh, right it, it, within the framework of that story you know right right so, and, like no matter wh- your value system your politics your point of view your prejudices everything comes out in your work so you should True. be a little you know we have such a massive platform and we are speaking to so many people that it's an opportunity don't miss it right right but you were the first makers to 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 do this OTT shift with Made in Heaven. What made you take that leap at that time? I mean, it was the smartest leap ever, and look where we are, and how this has burst and blossomed into our faces and our in our homes. But what made you take that leap at that time? What made you feel this was the right time? Was it instinctive? Was it just the story? Uh, what was it? Uh, you know, I um, I uh, Rima and me are both storytellers. we have both uh, uh so w- we have ideas that can s- fit different formats you know sometimes you have an idea that that would be best suited for a short film because you know it's got that much stretch in the thought you know yeah. you have ideas that won't be good for a movie they need to be you know the characters need to play out let's say made in heaven you can build your characters but there are so many things in our society and uh, yeah. so many has to touch upon that this requires a show that can go on you know or you take um, you know you make a, a thing and it, it's a movie it's a feature it can't be a short it can't be so we have many ideas that fit different formats and uh, we were very lucky when ott came because suddenly we had a home for certain ideas and we are we want to make films we want to tell stories and we don't really care uh, uh, what platform we are doing it at as long oh as story teller huh? predominant your platform agnostic you're a storyteller yeah. you tell it on any platform yeah, yeah. and it finds right. its own you know i mean every uh, format has its advantages and disadvantages and uh, that's it you know but have you felt that people have responded differently to the work you've done on ott versus cinema has there been a different sort of is it more instant is it far more is there a different segment that you're reaching that you didn't but uh, uh it's um, it's got a bigger resonance abroad which was surprising and it started actually with last stories the first time last stories went on, that was the first thing that actually went on to ott and it was uh, last stories on netflix and it was insane the kind of feedback we got and yeah, i so yeah cuz last stories i can't tell you how many nris living in america were like watching last stories and telling me babe that was just amazing for all the right reasons uh, but it, that was like so i had friends like in europe that i i hadn't met in 2 3 years that uh, uh do not did not know what i was doing that were calling me and be like dude i just saw your film so that was a bit of a shift because you actually 
play in those countries and everybody has access to that work and you are on a global platform and suddenly you're competing with the best of the world you know so uh, that was a huge perk of the OTT and then you're there you know your shelf life is long but that was a perk because your work goes wider than it does sometimes on uh, 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 in terms of a theatrical this went wider and this is going to in our theatrical business also more because people are going to get used to our stories you know slowly so i think it's a very good thing so yeah, will anything change i mean of course in a certain sense everything has changed this year but will anything change in the way directors like yourselves view your work uh, will it change aspects of the business does that mean you will have to change the way you treat your craft any differently are you worried for the post pandemic uh, for for life post pandemic as far as movies cinemas and movies as a business is concerned no i mean you know movies the theater business has been written off since forever the minute television came people were like this is the end of movies yeah then yeah. the video business came and they said now you can watch a movie only at home this is the end of movies then the home theater the digital and then the home theater came they were like why will people go to the movie you have surround sound you have large screens everybody can stay home nothing happened then ott came and they were like this is the end of movies the footfalls before covid to theaters even in india had increased our business right. as the industry had increased with ott coming in you know they are very dances people don't don't understand that like when i'm watching a show i watch one show at like i'll watch an episode when i want i'll put it off i'll see one episode yeah. in the night you know it's a very personal experience it's like reading a book but when i'm watching right. a movie on a screen i want to go there it's like a community experience i'm never going to watch a movie in my house on my no. i never. never do you know so i'm saying there is something as a community experience something a family does something you do with a date you go to a movie it's a different experience they cannot be interchanged nothing is replacing the big screen it is its own experience and it's something that is so in our dna that it's not going to go right. it'll go it's fantastic so we are filmmakers a certain creative license for some very very honest storytelling uh with the new censorship rules coming in uh what are your fears how do you deal with it as a filmmaker today as a storyteller today you know see we've been dealing with censorship because i make films anyway but uh, uh you uh, so we anyway have to deal with it but in terms of ott it's a massive disadvantage because you are censoring you are we are not going to be able to compete like i don't think delhi crime would have gone through yeah delhi won an emmy today because yeah. have the freedom to make what you make exactly and yeah on a platform that's global you are compi- do not handicap your artists do not do that and do not handicap your audience because what you're going to do is not just censor my content now if you're censoring my content you have to censor the global content so then narcos will be censored and uh, every uh, everything will be censored game of thrones oh my god will be censored so you're you're telling your audience that they they are not fit enough to watch anything you're not allowing your filmmakers to compete globally so i don't think i think they ha- should have like child regulations like this show cannot be watched <laughs> like disclaimers uh, you know lo- stuff like that like like everywhere in the world you can't like start censoring the internet not in a country like india yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um what is uh, if you could have given i mean there are so many women women and i'm going to say women filmmakers not in the way that everybody else says it but there are so many women who want to get into the business and enjoy the kind of success you have um if you could have given yourself any advice that from all that you know today if you could if you were starting off again and you knew everything you know today what would you have told yourself then that uh, there is such a thing as timing sometimes we think things are not coming our way and it's like it feels all wrong but uh, uh there is such a thing sometimes it just takes longer and you got to hang in there you got to hang in there and you got to um not let that delay or maybe someone else's lack of understanding or 
yeah you've got to stick to what you're here to do right i right. mean discerning if someone tells you the script is bad don't be like you don't understand it like listen here <laughs> you know so you have to also learn to take feedback and realize if there is a problem and can you improve or there is stance in waiting there is merit in waiting you've got to know that for yourself like i would say patience and perseverance keep going yeah what are you working on next tell us what's been going on in your mind what's what's coming next what's coming I'm, our way next i'm just setting up my company properly rima and me tiger baby so we are uh, we have a little show uh, uh uh this show that starts shooting for netflix on the 7th of december uh, with a new director uh which we are producing uh, with excel we oh have last today your friend ranveer is on the chat you can say hi to him so yeah yeah hello what <laughs> are <laughs> shooting ranveer he's asking you to sign him for a movie he's saying madam chalo film shoot karte hai he's already shooting don't be greedy you are already shooting why aren't you shooting <laughs> he's shooting rohit shetty's right now Yeah, so we are uh, producing. I'm going to get into Made in Heaven just now, season two. Uh, we have another show we don't have a title for, which Rima is helming. So she's doing that, and we have about three features on board. One doc series. Uh, it's it's manic. Plus, we are developing our next features. Rima and mine. Okay, lovely. Um, my my next question to you is uh, Zoya. Talk to us a little bit about. a creative block i know everybody knows your your creative process the kind of films you do but one of the one of the trappings of being a creative is that you are going to go through a creative block and you are how do you deal with it what is what happens when you go through a block you know whether it's right how do you get inspiration how do you find yourself back again what do we do uh i think take a break i think if you can afford to you know and if you can't afford to take a break then do something else you know if you're working also do something else like if you're stuck in the script leave it leave it for a while you know i i tend to uh uh like if i'm working say about um like i'll um say zindagi like if i'm writing something and if something is bothering me i'll just stop it for a while maybe i'll start reading uh books about road trips maybe i'll uh, uh you know look at a uh, a film set in spain maybe i'll do something connected but i'll feed my head in another way you know and uh just let it go for a while and then it then revisit it and the thing with blocks is you know i honestly uh don't believe that the muse comes to you i mean as a writer the only thing you really need is discipline you have to sit there if you say you're working 11 to 4 you bloody well sit at that laptop or book or whatever you write on you know there are no moments you have to be there like you can't go away from it because then it's not coming you know mm -hmm. blocked for a very long time because i think the discipline just breaks it through right Right. Um I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of rapid fire questions now. Uh not Karan's kind of rapid fires, but my kind of rapid fires. Um, and I and I just want to know a little bit more about your creative process through them. Uh tell me a book that you read recently that you would be excited to turn into a movie. That I would be excited to turn into a movie. Uh I mean um like turn thing it is being uh, turned into a show but it's a, it's a tough movie because it's political but it's an it's a very it, it's waiting to be adapted that book okay um if you could work with any hollywood talent who would it be aaron sorkin he's a writer oh and work with him of course script. of course of course from all the men you have take his writing chops yeah um i mean uh, west wing was just 
the most seminal piece of television viewing ever. Who is calling you now, Goya? Again, your fill, your your stag, your your no, static. If it's homie again, I'm gonna smack him. No, 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 it's not homie. Okay. Uh, my que- my next question to you is, from all the men you've worked with, right? All the boys, um, has anyone truly inspired you to? think differently has been an inspiration in more than one way it's not just a terrific actor but somebody who's left an impression on your creative process somebody you learned something from and said wow i think anil kapoor actually because it's not so much about my creative process it's about my entire uh, mindset it's about uh, it's about gratitude i think i learned that from him i think i learned to keep reminding myself how lucky i am that i'm doing what i love and uh, and i approach every day with that gratitude and that zeal and zest uh, i've worked with him in dil dhadak mein do he's been a superstar i grew up watching him and he comes to set and he comes in with he comes in as though it's his first film you know he he's got that kind of energy and that kind of uh, love and that kind of like he's he's thankful to be an actor and every day and you know works off you and wants to do something fresh and it, it's it, it's it was very inspiring for me so i think he really so, had a question to ask you on ranveer but now that he's joined us on this chat i feel it's <laughs> only my, i do tell us zoya what was it like working with ranveer singh what was the best part of working with him and the most annoying part of working with him nothing about ranveer annoys me actually nothing ha huh? nothing i mean and it huh? may change tomorrow it may change in 5 minutes right now but now as of now nothing about him really annoys me um he is um, the best part of working with him is that you just know i mean you just know you're going to get such a slamming uh, performance you know you know that your this character that you've written is going to be translated in a very authentic manner and uh, at the same time you i also enjoy the ride with him it's just not where we reach and what it comes out i love being on set with him i enjoy the process you know like it's fun because yes he is saying i am a delight he would like you to know that right Yeah. I don't have glasses. I can't read the nonsense he's writing. But uh, really, yeah. really, really, us is uh, um really good. He's super sensitive. He's super bright, and uh, I enjoy working with him. Like I, I, I feel like we create something good. Like I feel like if I work with him, something good's gonna come out. You know? Yeah. Right. Everybody seems to be asking if there is going to be a, a Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara Part Two or a Dil Dhadak Ne Do Part Two. Any answers for that, Zoya? Two different kinds of chapters with it, but I don't think it will be like a two in that way. Uh, I think we'll do we we'll adapt it in a different way if we do, you know. Right. Uh, films like I think they should just be left sometimes, you know. At least right. my like when I see a movie like The Breakfast Club. or dead poets yeah. society which are the kind of that inspired zindagi on a level um in a different way but they were the kind of movies that stayed with you you know i don't want to see a part two though at that minute when i finish watching you want it more i'm like a part right 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 is there a, is there any star you haven't worked with that you really want to work with right now somebody that excites you there are many i uh, name I, i didn't work with irfan and i would have really loved to work with him right irfan right. what work with the yes. three khan uh i haven't worked with them work with them in cameos but i want to work with them in proper roles i want to work with tabu i want to work with rani mukherji uh i want to work with uh uh ranbir i want to work with deepika i mean that there, there are just tons of actors i haven't worked with that are really good that i i definitely want to work with right if you had a dream if you had a dinner guest list like a dream dinner guest list who are the incredible women that would be on that 
guest list i think jacinda ardern the prime minister of new zealand i think trisha shetty you know, oh trisha we just had yesterday we did an insta chat with her yesterday zoya she was amazing thought, she's awesome. yeah i think she's amazing uh, i think fade souza who i love uh i think uh, andrea arnold she's a filmmaker i adore she made a movie called fish tank and she made a movie called american honey uh she's an incredible filmmaker so her uh i think uh, who else i'm only thinking dead, of dead or alive who dead, dead or alive well dead or alive then i think i would uh, definitely want dorothy parker the 1920s uh, writer the humorist i would definitely like to have her yeah and nina simone wow i'm i'm gate crashing that dinner zoya i'm gate crashing that dinner babe um what's the show you're currently binge watching the crown season 4 and four. from the entire ott universe is there any woman protagonist that you're very drawn to that you feel is just incredible a woman protagonist in the ott universe that i've absolutely loved uh there's so many um like who comes to mind i loved all the women in mrs america all of them have you seen the show no i haven't it's excellent you should watch it it's excellent uh oh my so I, all the women in that um i like the women in big little lies i like the Love. women in I love the women in Mad Men. Uh I, yeah, yeah, there are many shows that, you know. I mean, well-written shows have well-written male characters and well-written female characters. You know. That's true. well-written that you know the the women characters are always amazing. And the crowd. Is there, is there any interesting international European world cinema or even a Hollywood movie that you would love to remake? Oh wow. because you you know if you love something so much it's very difficult to think you can do it well you know but uh, yeah. uh, uh i would like to remake some of the gangster films yeah mm. Mm. the mob the mob chicago yeah. yeah all of those yeah and my last question to you zoya would be that who is the director you think best ex- exemplifies and captures the slice of life kind of movies you do in india overseas like who is an who is a international director you think that does beautiful slice of life cinema and captures urban modern um you know stories i mean there's so many and they're all different uh, like i love uh, noah bombach uh you know he's done the squid and the whale uh he's done he's done many films i love uh, yep. i love him i love i love david o russell he does also very okay. different films uh he did um uh, uh what you call um uh, american hustle and he did the fighter and he did do you know who i'm talking about yeah yeah of course i loved him yeah i love andrea anil though she she's done fish tank she's done, she she's amazing she's amazing um i love um who else uh, i mean i and i love the other big cinema ticket you know i love martin scorsese i love quentin tarantino i love uh, um um who else do i love martin scorsese quentin tarantino but that whole uh, um catherine bigelow you can not you can yeah yeah you so can I mean there are just various I don't like one kind of film so you know I love that actually so yeah is that because a lot of women and I'm hoping that a lot of young women are watching this because I think when I started my career 27 years back I was constantly searching inspiration I was constantly searching people who had done it before me so I could emulate my life on their path if you could give just any advice to women who want to be directors other than just what you said keep at it and all are there any things is there any insider secret you want to give them is there anything you would tell them to do like 
it could be as prosaic as watch more movies or read more books but what would you think has really helped you that you would like to tell them i think you must hone your craft you must know your shit like know your story inside out and if you want to be a director the biggest thing that a director needs is that's so funny someone just wrote nepotism under no, here no you'll see funny stuff you'll see some real pearls no no that's really funny because i was like yes that's why i'm here uh no um in the sense that you know you as a director what you really need to know is what your story is about and what the subtext of the story is what you are trying to say what is your perspective what is your point of view so know that know your characters inside out write their back stories write the world they come from uh, figure out what you're trying to say uh, look at the socio uh, political dynamic around the story uh, figure that out because to do everything once you have that ready na you know what the mood is once you know what the mood is na you your actors know what they're doing the good actors you know if you know how to guide them your dp comes to light your production designer designs you we get the good crew they know what they're doing you know if as long as you are clear about what you want to say you are fine so know your story backwards and i don't mean like oh this comes after this what i mean is know the soul the core of it know what you want to say through this story i think that right. is yeah i think that's the only thing you need Well thanks Zoya I can't wait to know what you're going to say next to your next movie I'm constantly going to be following everything you're doing there yeah. and uh, thanks Anvir for joining us it was a pleasure uh, lots of love to you Zoya and stay well and stay safe and Thank I'll see you guys thanks a lot bye bye